I actively trade. Many people that run seminars and conferences don't trade. You don't see their name, you don't see their statements because they don't trade. Now, that's good because I think it's good to learn from someone who actually does it, but also there is another thing that I have to be very, very careful of is that fair disclosure. Many of the trades you're going to see today, I own positions in. Now, that means that we could have a conflict of interest. Now, I don't think we have because most of those positions are large companies. They're not penny shares. You know, I won't recommend any small companies which we could move the market in. But you must understand that many of the positions that you'll see today, I and some other people around me, we may already own positions in. I've done training for about 10, 11 years. Um, I've been in this business now for 23 years. I know what you're going to ask already. I know what mistakes people are going to make. So what I'm trying to do and what I've always tried to do is cut that down and say, right, I know what works, what doesn't, and this is the way you're going to follow. But if you've got questions, no problem. I'm not scared of questions. If there's any shares you want to look at, write the name down. If you know the code, write the code down. If you don't, but just write the name down. It can be a US stock, UK shop. And we'll use that as real examples. Okay, I remember there was a guy who had a big position in Royal Bank of Scotland here last year. And, you know, it was like sometimes when you don't want to hear it. And I was saying to him, look, it's not good. It's not good. And he goes, well, will it get... You know, he was trying to, you know... It's like if you've been dumped by a lover and you hope they're going to come back. And I was trying to give him this... I was trying to subtly put it to him. I said, look, there's problems here. You need to get out of it. And he's, oh, but, you know, it's gone down so much. And I said, yeah, it can still go down lower. In the end, I just said to him, look, if I had them, I'd get out of them. And then I think I said to him, I'm short the banking sector, and that just finished him off. Um, so sometimes some things you're going to hear today you might not want to hear, but it's honestly, you know, it, it's... We are in chaotic times. Is it new? It's nothing new, okay? Some of you are saying, oh, how are your systems going to bear up with what's happened in the last few months? Well, the same way that they bared up in 2001, the same way that, you know, if I was following these systems, they would have bared up in 1987. So... It might all seem new, but it isn't. This just happens. Cycles just keep happening and repeat themselves. So we are in chaotic periods. And, yeah, it'd be great, you know, people saying it's the saying basically it's better to be a dog in a peaceful time than a man in chaotic periods. But what we have to remember, this is where we make a lot of our money. My own business career, most of my wealth has come out of recessions. So when people say, oh, times are bad and all the rest of it, it's nonsense. Yeah? It's either as good or bad as you want to make it. There's always opportunities. And what I see going on right now, especially the last few months, and I think what we're going to see it, there's a transfer of wealth. Okay? A lot of the millions that were made the last few years are very quickly being lost. And some people who were very up there have come down to earth quite quickly. Um, but what that means is, is there's also opportunities. Because as you'll learn from today... Money isn't made or lost, it's transferred, yeah? And while all the press was going, um, you know, oh, markets are down and all the rest of it, we were popping the champagne because we were short, yeah? So remember, there's always somebody on the other side making money of a transaction. There's always a buyer, always a seller. So don't... And, you know, the old question is, if you're so smart, how come you're broke? But, you know, many people still think banks are, you know... Uh, a service, all right, some of them are turning into government institutions now, they might turn into services, but they're profit-hungry ventures, you know. I went to go and work for an American bank, and this was in the 80s, um, and the first thing, you know, everybody had to go and see the president. I thought, blimey, I'm going to see the president, you know, I was 18, but didn't realise there's loads of presidents, isn't there? There's vice president, you know, president's like a manager. And I went, but I went, I did see the big president because he, he wanted to see every new dealer that came in. You know, literally got one minute in the guy's office and it was all wood. And he goes, Vince, why are we here? He goes, we're here to make money. And that's all, you know, he literally said, and it's true, that's all banks are here for. Brokers, banks, spread betting companies, they're all here to make money. How do they make money? By taking our money. Okay, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do different things. So understand being perplexed. Lost, confused, it's part of the business. There are many interest, industries that like confused customers. And as I learned in the last few years when I had a listed company, the amount of money we spent in fees and legal fees and brokers and accountancies, that's why they made more money than anybody else, the advisors. 
because they make everything so just complicated. To make it as complicated as possible. So what we're going to do today, we're almost going to go backwards and we're going to take it all away. Now it's very important that you don't do what some people have done, is they've gone away with good winning systems, they've made money, and then they think they can advance it or do better, or by trading more, they'll make more money, and then they end up losing it all. So understand, a lot of things you're going to see today, you're going to think are quite simple, those that wonder what happened. The last few months, I would say a lot of people are sitting there thinking, what's happened? Or, you know, or why has it happened? Anybody who'd been to this course last year, or even the year before, would have been ready and would have been known exactly what to do, and we saw it coming. You know, we were short on September the 15th um, and made 2,500 points on the Dow. So, you know, for us, it wasn't a big, big surprise. I've been bearish on the FTSE 250 uh, for months and months. And the thing about writing stuff and videoing things, you know, talk about evidence, I, how can I say that I said one thing when I said another when it's all been filmed? So, it's nothing new. What are we going to cover today? Well, these are the sort of main parts, but we digress a lot of the time. Those of you that come to seminars, you know we end up talking about something else. But it's always connected, and there's always a point to my story. You know, I'll go away and I'll tell you a little story or what have you, but it, it's for you to remember things as well. The one-minute trading rule, that's one thing that many people want to know about. This is what I found. The longer it takes to make the decision, normally worse the trade. So if you don't see it in a minute or less than a minute that that trade is the right trade to take, then it's possibly not. So if you've got to check all 100 indicators and Mars has got to be opposite to Jupiter and all these things, and you'll see some of these systems on the internet, you know, and you'll think there's so many rules and this line crosses this and that, oh, please. Chances are, you know, it's just so complicated. So really, I'm going to show you something very, very simple to know whether we should buy something or sell something. The other thing is, I pretty much use the same rules for everything. And that really makes it easy. So whether we're looking at stocks, commodities, currencies, we can pretty much use the same rules. How to piggyback on hedge funds. Now, we can also short hedge funds. We can make money by actually selling them. And these are the so-called brains. The majority of hedge funds are awful, but there are a few good ones. And we'll look at that as well. And I'll show you how you can actually invest in these people or piggyback on them with very little money. You know, if you've got a lot of money, you can also invest in them. But I will show you a way how you can actually get into these funds. Because there are a few pretty good ones that run some interesting strategies that you might want to, you know, back into. The leverage tool that turns pennies into Clever money, stupid money scam. You know, I've always said there's always a buyer and there's always a seller, yeah, in a trade. And... Let's think about it. Both of them think they're clever, don't they? The buyer thinks he's got a great deal, and the seller thinks he's got a great deal. But they can't both be right, can they? So, something I call the clever money, stupid money scan, um, which is basically, let's look at where the smart money is and where the stupid money is. It's going up, we make it on going down as well. You know, last year, we had some great runs on oil, but we've also made good money on shorting things like lead and zinc. And that's the next point we're going to talk about, is some of the metals that people know, don't talk about. Now, until recently, to trade aluminium and trade things like zinc and lead, it's been a nightmare. If you phone an IG, even now, and ask for a trade, a price on aluminium, you could be waiting 10 to 15 minutes to get a price, and then wait until you try and get out, God help you. But I'll show you another way of how you can do it. Because those are not settled like normal futures. There's a little bit more to it. But we can do that with other ways. I'm going to show you a system that will take no longer than one year, uh, that one hour a year, sorry, that's made 136%, and it's still got that money because it's currently out. This is what, another thing you've got to learn, and you won't hear this from the bookmakers again. Many times, what's the correct trade? No trade. Yeah? The correct trade is put your money into cash. There's no shame in earning 4 or 5% a year for a small period of a time, rather than trying to lose 30, 40%. So what that commodity system does, of course, some of you say, well, you can also go short commodities, you can, but that was only based on being long. So what it does, it buys the commodity index when certain things happen, and then sells it when certain things happen, and then that money can go somewhere else. So you're out. So right now, that system has no trade on the commodities. 
So you understand sometimes the right trade is no trade. How to beat 95% of the experts, I'll show you how to do that. Now talk about timing. That system gave a buy signal out on the 28th of October, and today's the 7th. So you've got the signal just literally a few days ago, and you can all go away and trade that now. So that system gave out a signal. 